Hello, it's Cameron from the Chamber. I'm your policy and engagement lead. And today you might have seen the email uh, through us about the new provincial health measures uh, required for screening employees prior to entering the building. Uh, so now this needs to be completed on a daily basis uh, before the employee enters the workplace establishment or utilizes any worker vehicles. Uh, and they must fill out the health attestation form on a daily basis. So internally here at the Chamber, we've decided to utilize the Google Doc uh, form because it is um, very friendly for your uh, mobile, your tablet, uh, or your computer, and you can use it at home prior to uh, your commute to work, uh, thus filling out the form. So I'm going to attempt to outline how the Chamber went about creating our internal document through Google Docs. So you can see that I'm sharing my screen here and uh, I'm going to open up uh, obviously landing on the Google homepage. Uh, here is where uh, obviously you will need a Gmail account in order to create a free Google form uh, that will allow your employees to access it uh, without the need for a Google email. You just need it to be able to create the Google Doc. So that being said, we're going to go in and uh, click right here on this little grid system here you see, and you're going to go right to Drive. Now, this is going to pull you into, obviously, your uh, shared Google Drive, where you'll begin to start uh, developing the health attestation form. You can see that we've already created one here. So uh, then we're going to go to New, and underneath you'll see that there's an option here to click for Google Forms, and that's the one that you're going to select. From here, you basically uh, come up with a completely blank document and you have your you know, sort of options that you can choose uh, as to how you build your questions, but you probably want to start uh, by addressing the form with a title. So uh, here we have uh, the chamber obviously as being the health attestation form. So we've got that here. Uh, and in this section, of course, you're going to want to uh, just sort of let that uh, be for uh, without collecting email addresses because essentially you're going to have a, a section in which you're going to be asking for uh, the employee's name uh, and you're going to have a time stamp as well. So uh, do allow the employee to edit uh, after submission because you know just in case there's any errors uh, they're able to pop back in. So uh, you want to leave this deselected as well because you don't want anybody else to be able to see um, you know which which could be potentially sensitive information. So from that, you're going to go through presentation, uh, show link to submit another response, not necessary. Obviously, they'll just be doing this on a daily basis by accessing the link that you're going to create afterwards. Quizzes, not necessary. So we're just going to hit save and move on. So in the form description, what we've utilized is sort of what was in the body of the email uh, you see uh, previously. Uh, so what you can do is you can go back in to the email that you received from the chamber earlier this morning and pop in uh, you know, sort of what the purpose of this health attestation for and the instructions that follow thereafter. So, you know, obviously, as we start to build the questions, you want to make sure that you build these questions so that uh, all answers, hopefully health wise, lead to no, and therefore the employee has passed and can enter the workplace. Uh, you do want to make sure that you put this part in because if they have answered yes to any of the questions, then uh, unfortunately they will not be able to answer, uh, rather enter the premises on that day and will subsequently have to follow um, particular health measures uh, and guidelines to uh, you know, ensure if perhaps they need to go for a test or just remain in isolation. Um, right, so we're just going to say if you've answered yes to any questions, you have not passed. So what I do at this point now, obviously, is just sort of run through the form. Uh, and now you've all received uh, in the email that we sent earlier, the COVID-19 screening tool for workplaces, businesses, and organizations. And what we did is simply just copy and paste what the questions are asking and, and pop that into here. So, uh, you know, the first thing we want to do uh, is select not multiple choice, but you want a short answer because this is where you're going to ask the employee to uh, enter their first and last name. And because this isn't the first person, I'm just going to break with that. Uh, so that obviously allows the employee, you want to make sure that each question is absolutely required so that the employee doesn't have an opportunity to skip over any of the questions. So we're going to hit required there. Uh, the next question I have, and what makes it really easy is you see this little button down here that says duplicate. That just helps you move along through this form a lot easier. So here for our first question, you can see, please enter first and last name. The red star uh, indicates that that question is required and the form cannot be submitted until each question has been answered. 
so the next one we have is to ensure a timestamp. And of course, here you have the opportunity to scroll down and select date. Uh, so obviously, you want to be able to ensure that the employee uh, and enters today's date. And so there we go. It's required. Perfect. And we'll move on. Uh, you know, also, you would want to include a timestamp that allows the employee to indicate at which time uh, they've entered this information. Uh, so that not only allows you to keep track of when the employee is entering and, uh, you know, therefore able to enter the workplace having answered no, uh, but also it just helps for your own internal uh, record purposes as well. So we want to ensure uh, that they do the, cur the current time at which they're you know, entering. So obviously enter the current time. Eastern Standard Time if you operate across different time zones. Uh, so there they'll have the opportunity to enter that time and you're set to go and the question is required. Uh, so now you're going to move into the portion of the health attestation form that asks those important questions and what you can do is follow along in that Ministry Health Guideline and simply plug and play the questions that they ask. So what you're going to do first of all is make sure that this time is now changed to multiple choice or check boxes. Now, what I've done is check boxes because it's easier to record, but uh, you can do multiple choice as well. There is no difference between the two. I like a check box, so I suggest a check box. Uh, so you'll notice that um, before we get into asking these questions, you probably want to put a little bit of a you know, descriptor or title in here. So what you can do is you can just pop over to the little side menu here, and you're going to see the T's, and that adds a title or description. So we're going to go ahead and put that in. So in this, uh, oops, sorry, see these little dots here? You have an opportunity to drag that guy up because now we're entering the question portion. So here asks the question, you know, obviously, do you have any of the following new or worsening symptoms or signs? Symptoms should not be chronic or related uh, to other known causes or conditions. Uh, this is wording that we pulled directly from that uh, ministry um, health guideline uh, tool. And uh, we just plugged and played that right into there. So we're going to go, uh, you know, if you want to pause the video at this point, just to make sure that the wording is correct, you can do that. Uh, and that's all set to go. Now, this doesn't matter that it's required because really it's not a question. It's just um, a title that's leading into the next section. So we're going to pop down to our first question. So you see, I have my checkbox there. The question is required. And uh, when you do copy it, obviously it just leaves in the previous question. So if we scroll down the health attestation form that was provided by the ministry, we know that the first thing it asks is, do you have any fever or chills? Uh, you can go yes and no. Google is really nice in you know, giving you those options. Um, oftentimes it suggests questions that you should ask, you know, add an option or other. Uh, this form does not allow for that type. You just want simple yes or no questions. Uh, and again, that question is required. So just sort of click off. You're good to go. We're going to duplicate this question. So now you can see here it's got the red star. Yes, no, and you're good to go. If you scroll down to the next, obviously the uh, you know next question is difficulty breathing uh, or anything like that. Uh, and you'll notice that because I duplicated the question, uh, the yes, no stays there and the required uh, check is also on. So that's perfect. So what you're going to do is you're going to go through and make sure that you get all those questions that are indicated on the sheet that was provided by the ministry and pop that into the form here. Uh, I think, you know what, we'll just for continuity's sake, complete the very last question so you can kind of see where you should probably stop. And I believe the last question on the form is, have you had close contact with a confirmed or probable case of COVID? Yes, no, required, checkbox, perfect. And that means that I'm done here. So that's great news. So once you've completed your form, you know, you do have the option to go in and you know, change the color scheme if you feel so uh, fit to do so. You can obviously choose an image, which therefore allows you to add your um, you know, company logo or anything like that. You can drag that in from your desktop or wherever you have it uh, internally. But you know, these are just sort of fun things that you can do to uh, an otherwise very serious uh, form.
so you do have the option to preview it before you actually publish it or send it out. So you'll note here that now I'm seeing the completed form in green. So I have my title up here, my little description, and then the red star indicating where uh, questions are required, which should be all of them. Uh, so here, just to do a little quick test, uh, you know, please enter your first and last name. Month is based on your month day. So we are the 10th, or rather, sorry, 5th of October. And the current time is uh, 2.54. However, I have been at work since uh, 9 o'clock this morning. Uh, so obviously that would reflect um, the time at which I would have done prior to coming into the building. Here we can see that this is our title portion. It is not a question, but a descriptor. And you're leading into the sections where you begin to you know, uh, answer the questions. And I know that I need to answer no based on my you know, current health status uh, and scroll through. And I don't have any of these. Now there are gonna be more questions, but for time's sake, I haven't done them all. Uh, but you essentially follow what we did before and you simply hit submit. Excellent, so I know the form is working. Your response has been recorded. I do have the option to go back if I feel as though I've made a mistake. Uh, but just know that if you do go back into the form, you'll see that all my information is still there. But if anything has changed, I have to resubmit the form. And it brings me back to this page. So that's great. We know that that's working and uh, the form is essentially doing what it's meant to do is record and timestamp uh, all uh, data that's being entered by the individual employee. So you'll note here that there's been a response. So this is how you're going to be able to monitor um, you know, what the employee's responses are uh, and at what time they're coming in. So you're gonna pop into the response side of things and a really easy way to keep track of uh, who's filled out the form is by clicking the little icon that's essentially an Excel uh, Google Doc. So we're gonna click on that and we wanna make sure that it's creating a new spreadsheet and we're gonna call it, um, Chambers Health Form Responses. And this is going to record all of the data uh, that is being plugged in into a live Excel spreadsheet that can be shared with uh, administration, uh, HR, whoever looks after um, you know, these sort of forms going forward. And the nice thing is, is that it timestamps it, but it also, uh, when it came in uh, live, and this is what the employee indicates the time was. So as you can see here, uh, it took me one minute uh, based on the time that I put at the beginning. So I know that this is the day it was filled out with time. Now, uh, obviously there is an opportunity to do these forms retroactively, but that sort of defeats the purpose. So just make sure that when they're filling out the form, they're doing so uh, prior to their shift. And you can always check the timestamp here, which is the real time completed. From there, you can go through your questions and you'll note that all of these say no. You're gonna have more uh, columns, obviously, because there's gonna be more questions once you complete it. Uh, but that's pretty well it. So you can refer back to the sheet uh, at any time. And uh, depending on who you need to share this with, you have that opportunity to uh, share so in, uh, in the emails uh, or with groups internally as well. So finally, the thing that you're gonna to wanna to do if I switch back to uh, my template here with the questions is go into your settings. Now, we ensure that we have the collect email addresses off, uh, limit to one response, not necessary, but make sure that you allow the edit after response. So we're good there. And finally, for you to share it internally with all of your employees, what you're gonna to wanna to do is hit send now you can do it in an email version, but I don't necessarily like to do it because it doesn't allow you to brand or uh, utilize your, let's say Outlook, for example. So we're gonna go to the little link button here, which provides you with a link to the, uh, the, the Google Doc. Uh, I like to shorten it because it just keeps it nice and neat. And from there, what I'm gonna do is copy that link and then share it in an email uh, with uh, all of the employees internally. And in that email to note that it is important that each uh, individual employee completes the form uh, prior to entering uh, the premises uh, or uh, reporting for work that morning. Uh, I will note that uh, if you do have any questions as to how you can develop this form, 
uh, for your organization, then you're welcome to, to reach out to myself and I can certainly help you walk through. But I hope this video was uh, helpful and instructional and uh, your chamber is always here to help. So if you do have any questions, please reach out to myself uh, or my colleague Carmen uh, at 705-360-1900. And I hope that uh, works for you. Stay healthy and stay safe.